How's it going folks and a happy Friday. Today we've got a triple header of Park to Prem, but what's better than a triple header of Park to Prem? I'll tell you what, it's to see your own player number one in the next gen top 50 wonder kids in world football. That is right, Talha Chabuk is in there at number one. Of course, signed just this year for 63 million. I'll be honest, his performances haven't exactly been super inspiring, but they've been inspiring enough for the award voters to take notice, and he has taken the number one spot. But he's not the only player in our team in this list. I feel like this is one of my favourite features in the new game. Pabon, who we signed for 1.5 million just this January, a bit of a, a spur of the moment, don't want to say panic transfer, but a spur of the moment transfer, certainly a fair way to describe it. He's got number six. Elsewhere, Manez has got number 11. Of course, he was another player we agreed to sign in January on loan at PSV at the moment. We signed him for £29 million. Elsewhere, David Linden, 14th. Blondahl, who we signed at the start of this season, you might remember, for £4.8 million and loan back to Norgeland. He is also in the top 25. And Gaza, who's a player we signed years ago when he was 16. You might remember it, you might not. He spent the last few years out on loan at various clubs. The last season, he's been playing for our under-23s. He's developed really, really well, even if there are some question marks over his potential. He sneaks in at number 34. So, uh, yeah, things are looking good off the pitch and on the pitch. And well, today, as I've already mentioned, we got a triple header. Manchester City in the Premier League is a big game to kick things off. And after that, small matter of the Champions League quarterfinal, where we've been drawn against Inter... But you might remember back in the group stage we took on and beat 6-0. Um, not expecting a repeat of this, but if it happens, great. Hopefully, we're going to keep our march going on. I want to make it to the Champions League final and win the whole thing. The quarterfinals are big today. Let's see if we can end the week on a high, shall we? Welcome back everyone, this is episode number 38 of Park to Prem, I think. I say this every time, why even bother saying the name of the episode in terms of the number if I can't even remember what number we're on? I'm pretty sure it's 38. Um, someone suggested last time I had this exact same dialogue that I just get it wrong intentionally so you guys leave loads of comments. So in that case, welcome back to episode number 39. I think it's episode number 39, etc. Anyway, today we've got a triple header. We've got bigger things to focus on than the number of this video. We are Manchester City in the Premier League at home, a must-win game, a game that if we win, because it's the early game of the weekend, could see us go eight points clear at the top of the Premier League, although Manchester United and Liverpool have games in hand. And well, after that, as I've already mentioned, it's all about the Champions League. The Champions League were backing and expected to win. So, uh... Yeah, no pressure. Now, of course, last episode, we won in the Champions League first knockout round. We knocked out Bayern Munich. 3-0 in that second leg was emphatic, and we've played two games since. The first in the Premier League, slightly less convincing. We beat Chelsea 1-0. Did rotate the team a little bit for this game, as you can see here. Heinz Winter ended up getting the only goal for us in this game. He was our striker up top. Chelsea this season struggling a hell of a lot, down in 14th place. Don't think there's any risk that they'll go down, but they have lost five on the bounce including this one against us. Really, I would have liked to score a few more. And well, after that, we had the FA Cup quarterfinal where we beat Arsenal 3-0. Played a very, very strong team for this game. It was a justified decision. We ran out fairly comfortable victors. And with it, we've unlocked a nice, easy semi-final against Liverpool. So, uh, yeah, not the kindest draw. I did think about doing the FA Cup because um, it precedes the Inter Milan games. But I just feel like the Premier League's bigger, isn't it? The Premier League, let's be honest, the FA Cup, we've won that before. That's been done. But the, the Premier League, we're in a position to win it. This is what my focus is on. And this game against Man City in fifth is one of only a few games that I look at to end the season in the league and go, that's a truly challenging game. I suppose the others I'd throw in there would be the Arsenal away and Everton away games. But besides that, lots of games we should be winning. Now, because it's a triple header, no messing around today, we're going to get straight into the meat and potatoes of things. Uh, in terms of team news, De Silva coming back from injury, you can see here he passed a fitness test and has been told he should play up to 60 minutes. Uh, with that in mind, I would normally play Middleby, but Middleby only passed a fitness test to play 45 minutes. Unfortunately for us, Jacob has got injured yet again in this recent run of games. He was out for two weeks after the Arsenal game. The good news for us was that coincided with an international break. The only other first team player missing to today is Chirich, who is currently out suspended, so 40 comes back into the team. Besides that, though, 
It's a very, very strong start in 11. I was thinking about it earlier, and I suppose this is kind of applicable to real life and real football at the moment, but if I had to pick one between winning the Champions League this year and winning the Premier League this year, which would I actually want? Which would be the one that you'd want? I'd really be interested to know if your club be that in Football Manager or in real life, could only win one or the other, which would you take? I say this as a Liverpool fan ahead, of course, of the Champions League final, which I realise means this video could age horrifically if you're watching it a week or two after it's out, where Liverpool have lost potentially to Real Madrid. Let's think positive. They're going to win easily, and it's going to be it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. But I'd love to know your thoughts. I feel like because I priorita I'm prioritising the league this year here, I'm going full strength here, knowing that it could be a risk going into the Champions League game. Um, one thing that is worth noting is the fixtures are a little bit spaced out. Um, between the two Inter Milan games that we have today, there are no fixtures. We actually have a week off, which is kind of rare, and I'm looking forward to making use of. And also, this game is on a Friday, which means that with the Champions League being midway through next week, we do actually get a few more days than we normally would at this point in the season to hopefully kind of recover. Anyway, we had an early chance that was blazed over the crossbar. There could be another chance here, though. De Silva, Zambergen, dinks it back post. Carlier heads it down. Horniak was there. His effort was blocked, I think. Man City on the back foot early on here. They have had a bit of a recovery run this year. If we just look at the league table, you can see they are currently up to fourth place if they draw here. Um, they are a team competing at the top, although they have played significantly more games than all the teams immediately around them. I was expecting this to be tough, but at home... We have to back ourselves, right? We've got a chance here, maybe. Sanchez, back post. Carlier heads it. Hoy and Hull holds on to it for them in goal. Chances coming our way. We've not really taken any of them as of yet. Ten minutes left of the half. There could still be more action going on here. Just looking at the stats. Fairly even in terms of possession. We've created more. I think that's kind of been indicated by the highlights. But we're yet to have one of those really great opportunities that you feel like is an obvious goal-scoring chance missed. Few half chances coming our way, but maybe a chance here. It falls to Gurajaga. I think he's off. I think he's off. No one raised their hands and he just looked off, didn't he? It was a good finish by him, to be fair. He doesn't always score those kind of one on ones, but he just went too early with his run. We should also discuss the pass here by Vassilo. Absolutely mad. I'll tell you what, doesn't get much closer than that, does it? Corner here, De Silva over it, whipping in on his left foot. Tullio is there, it's converted in. I think this is about to be ruled out again for a reason. What are we checking here? Did Tullio not head it to himself? Was there not a defender involved? Tullio's in double-figure goals, by the way, for the season. The man's been lethal from set pieces. I thought he'd grabbed another one there. Um, that one was ruled out. I don't think it was ruled out for offside. I guess it was a foul that was given. Either way, it's 0-0 at the break. I'm not sure how we're not winning. Right. Get shouty, shouty. Into the second half we go. We ended this half very, very strongly just without that penetrative finish. But maybe it can come here. Ball's crossed in. Man City clear it away and we have committed men up the field. There could be a chance of a counter-attack. Worth noting that in the last month, while we've played seven or eight games, I think we've kept clean sheets in all but one match. We have been absolutely superb defensively as of late. I realise now, setting this up perfectly for them to go and score Man City. Please don't do it. Ruiz, big stop by the keeper. We needed that from him. He hits it over the crossbar. It's a little corner maybe to deal with. Man City haven't created a lot this game. That chance there was a good chance. And well, we've managed to deal with the corner, I think. I hope. There's still maybe space in this wide area for Man City to make something happen. Fuentes... Goes back to Brown. Can we just end the highlight? Thank you, Football Manager. So we're getting up to that time where I was told that I might need to take off De Silva. Elsewhere, 40 has just picked up a knock. So we're going to bring Adara Mola in at left back. Of course, first choice left back's out. Second choice left back's now picked up a knock. Be a bit of a concern if we got another issue in that area. De Silva's played well, but I really can't afford to risk him with his current injury situation. So I'm going to bring in Middleby and I'm going to do something a little bit gambly. I'm going to make my third and final change now in the 55th minute, and I'm bringing in Heinz Winter. The man got the all-important goal against Chelsea, and oh my word, Man City nearly got a goal against us there. The woodwork comes to the rescue. We've got 30 minutes to try and make something happen here. It's been an even game. I think we've probably had the better of the play on the whole. 
But to win a football match, you do have to score. That's what my grandma taught me when I was growing up, you know. So some teach you valuable life lessons. That was the life lesson my grandma told me. If you want to win a football match, you got to score. Have these players learned that lesson? Carlier, Zambergen. There's options in the middle. Three of them lurking away. Pulled back to Sanchez. Carlier squares it. Middleby has his effort blocked. I thought he was about to do some typical Middleby heroics on off the bench. Unfortunately... Denied by the block. There could still be a chance here, though. Talha, the best wonder kid in world football, to Zambergen, crosses it to Heinz Winter, who finds the back of the net. That one will count. And, well, Heinz Winter, I'll tell you what, he is coming into his own. He is quickly putting me in a situation where Severin might have to leave in the summer. I don't know why I'd need him right now. Heinz Winter has just been a little hero for us, and he's turned up again here. A player who has great pace, a good reading of the game as well. His finishing, his composure is all really, really solid. And he just keeps popping up with these all-important goals in games where we can't find a breakthrough. And I, I suppose I just have to be grateful for it. With 10 minutes left here, I am going to look to just slow down the play a little bit. Just lower the tempo, shorten the passing. Let's look after the ball a little bit more when we have it in possession. Of course, hoping this isn't going to work against us, but... Off camera, it's been my go-to strategy really to kill off matches and as has been indicated by the recent form and the number of clean sheets, it's really worked for us. And while we could get a second, we probably should have had a second. I didn't have a go at Zambergen to start today's episode. If I'd criticised him, maybe he would have scored like last time. The woodwork denies him. We've been massively on top in this game. I do feel like that second goal might be needed. I'm hoping it won't be, but it could be. Also, I've just seen Man City bring on Trent Alexander-Arnold as a sub. Does anyone else feel queasy at that thought? What is this timeline? This is cursed, right? We really have to score. Middleby in the wide area. Tries to cross it in. It's blocked by the defender. I thought for a second it was just going to wind up in the back of the net, being one of those comical football manager moments. But the keeper did actually manage to save it. Now Man City looking to bring it forward. I don't know Mola. I'll tell you what, since we brought him in at left back, he's been very good, of course, really just signed because he came through the Crystal Palace Academy and was homegrown at club, but he's proven he's worth in this game here, as has Winter, he's bursting through, he's hit the woodwork, we've hit the post a few times in this game now. I mean, one last shout to Man more. five minutes of added time, we've had 31 shots, 14 on target, an XG of nearly three, and yet we've only scraped by 1-0, but the crucial thing is it was a win, they had barely any chances in that second half, to be honest, we just... Showed our dominance as the game went on. Heinz Winter getting a 7.7 .7 on off the bench. I'll give myself a little pat on the back for that. Good decision making, Jack. And uh, with that result, we do put pressure on the teams trailing us. Manchester United and Liverpool with plenty to do. Only six games left of the season for us. We've got a better goal difference. Got this nice cushion. And we're really setting a pace for the other teams to maintain. And it's going to be difficult for them. I talked about how good we've been defensively recently. You can just see here... I know there were some maybe question marks in the comments, and indeed I had some question marks about how good this system was going to be defensively. I think when you look at this recent form, it gives you a pretty good indicator against some very, very good teams that it is more than capable of shutting out the big boys. Anyway, we've got Inter in five days' time. We're going to rest up the players for that. First leg's away from home. Hopefully we can get a win in that one. I'll see you in a mo. Okay, folks, we are now back to focus on the Champions League. But before we do that, just a little look at the Premier League action that happened over the weekend. Liverpool drew against Chelsea. That was a bit of a shock result, although we only scraped by against Chelsea. Unfortunately for us, Manchester United dispatched of Southampton rather convincingly uh, just on Monday. It is now Wednesday the 11th. We are still top of the league. We still have this five-point cushion at the top. Liverpool dropping off slightly. But at least for now, we're going to suspend our focus on the Premier League and instead focus on what lies ahead. And that is a game against Inter Milan. Now, in typical work the space fashion, forgot to sort out the team. So I've quickly done a once over on it now. And this is the team for today's game. Unfortunately, Sanchez out suspended. An accumulation of yellow cards means that he is not available at right back. It's a big day, therefore, for McIntosh. Elsewhere in goal, Ruiz has got a tight hamstring. Yeah, um... He's got injured. He's going to return in a day. I'm going to take a risk on him. I think he'll be fine. His condition isn't too bad. And besides that, the rest of the team is pretty much at full strength. One little change made, and that is the fact that we've brought in Jorge here to play in the centre mid position. Um, didn't play him last game just as part of the rotation. 
This man has been a squad player who's kind of just become a main man in the first team, I feel like, as of late. In many ways, I feel like we maybe missed him for that Man City match. You can see he's played so many of our last 20 games, and when he has played, he's been absolutely superb. Uh, four goals, six assists so far in the Champions League. Hoping for more of the same from him today. Elsewhere, De Silva is back fit and raring to go. And yeah, the rest of the team is in pretty good shape. Now, you might have caught it just on the bench. There is no Severin. Of course, in the Champions League, we're only allowed seven subs instead of the nine that we get in the Premier League. And as a result of his recent form and just how good he is, Heinz Winter finds himself on the bench. I feel like between Winter and Middleby, and with Newton and Hornyak as well, kind of centre mid options, that this really isn't justification to have Severin on the bench, which... I don't know, a few years ago, I think would have been a mental take, but I feel like the proof is in the pudding. It's almost impossible to ignore just how well other players have stepped up over the last year or two. But anyway, we need to step up here away against Inter. We beat them 6-0 in the Champions League. We did also lose to them earlier on this year in the group stage, albeit that was at a point where we knew we were top of the group and we rotated things around a lot. And well, I'm hoping that in the first of two games against them in this episode, we're going to get off to the best possible start. Somehow we are already 30 minutes into this game and yet we're only just getting the first highlight. It's going to be Inter on the far side playing it forward. Red though well by our players and now Chirich plays through De Silva. Can't quite get on the end of it unfortunately. And uh, well now Inter and looking to bring it forward again. They play it forward to Ivan. Can the defenders get back? They can't in that foot race. And it's a very very simple goal. Vanderson at right back launching the ball forward. Ivan with a load of space to attack into him while the striker took the one-on-one -on -one very nicely. Tullio was breathing down his neck, trying to get back into position, trying to apply some pressure, just couldn't quite get there. And in the end, it was smashed through the middle to give into the lead. Corner coming up, I think, here on the near side. De Silva over it. He raises his hands above his head. Does he have a plan? Yes, he does. Oh, my word. Vassilo turns it in from a very impossible angle. Marcus Tullio had the initial header. I'll be honest, didn't really want it to fall to another centre-back there. You wanted it to be a, a striker latching onto the end of it. But you know what? Vassilo up to the task. Difficult angle. Squeezes it in. It might be a set-piece. We don't care. We make it 1-1. But unfortunately for us... Straight into another highlight. Seven minutes left of the half. It's all action all of a sudden. An attempted ball through by Inter there was a little lacklustre. Smashed straight into McIntosh. And now with Georgie, who's going to well, try and play it forward. Headed back to their keeper by Inter. This is a, a cagey first leg so far, I feel like. Neither team has created a great deal. Chances that have come either team's way have been taken. I'm hoping that we might get a chance to, well, get back into the lead of this game. De Silva, Gurajaga, one-on-one, difficult angle, not too difficult though. Slots into the bottom corner. It's a quick fire double. That is goal number 30 for the season for Gurajaga. He has got plenty in this Champions League campaign. And yeah, a really, really nicely worked goal here. Jorge to De Silva, played through to Gurajaga. Still had a lot to do there. Not an easy chance by any means, but he slots into the bottom corner, makes it 2-1. And uh, I will happily take this at halftime, please, football manager. I feel like we've been the better team despite a lack of possession, just in terms of quantity of chances created. But quantity is not enough. You need to have the quality. And we're into a one good cross there away from creating and potentially scoring another goal in this game. We managed about 25 minutes without anything happening. It's now burst into life, this game. Maybe that caginess in the opening has gone. Jorge brings it forward, dinks it to Gurajaga, who hits both posts and then it's cleared away. I don't know how that didn't end up in the back of the net. Inter will be mightily relieved. That shot hit both posts and managed to go out again. It's only 2-1 at the break. I'm going to tell the players I'm not very happy, but I'll be honest, secretly a little bit inside, I am actually quite happy. Um, there is instantly a kickoff highlight here. This kind of fills me with dread, but let's see what we're going to make of it. Talha, Carlier to Zamberg, and we ended the second, well, the first half on top. Well, can we start this second half on top? Carlier gives it to Zamberg and out on the right wing. He's going to cross it towards Gurajaga, who's through on goal again. He's already scored one. That was maybe easier than the last one. The keeper makes a heroic stop to keep Inter in this game. Now with De Silva, though, who's going to cross it in. I thought towards Tullio. Apparently Vassilo handballed it there. What a wazzock. Talha at the back, utilising the power of the headband as he plays it forward to Jorge. Tackled there by Gravenberch. Was uh, was it Zambergen for us? I'm not sure if it was Zambergen or Carlier. 
Of course, Graven Birch, quite good in football manager, quite good in world football, in case you haven't heard. Recently signed, of course, for Bayern Munich. Inter on the attack on this near side. Velez back to Vanderson, who already has one assist. Now with Graven Birch, it's a crunching tackle by Carlier. And then De Silva, he puts in a silly tackle. It's going to VAR to verify the penalty. These are very rarely chalked off in football manager. Inter might be about to be presented with an opportunity from the spot to draw level. Barella is going to be stood over it. A long-term servant of Inter. Can Ruiz come up big? No, is the answer. Shot sends him the wrong way. It was a tremendous penalty. Goal number six of the season for Barella. And while the reigning Italian champions... Putting up a bit of a fight. I say that. Remember last Champions League where we took on the reigning German champions. That was 2-2 after the away leg. Maybe this is just history repeating itself. Or maybe that's just my way of coping with it. Let's be honest. There's still lots of football left to be played here. I am going to make a change. Vassilos had a good game, but on a yellow card does scare me. I'm going to take off Carly A for middle B. I'm also going to bring in Horniak, I think. But I'm going to play him at centre mid and play Georges A higher up the pitch. You might be wondering, Jack, why are you taking off De Silva? He's been sent off in big games before. He's got that competitive streak. And I really can't afford to go down a man. And while Vassilo, I have no reason to doubt his ability to, well, remain disciplined. De Silva, he's a bit of a nutcase, is the captain. And let's be honest, bringing in Horniak, bringing in Middleby, it's not like we're weakening the team, really. It's just bringing in some equally good players who can maybe add... A fresh injection of life. Their fresh legs on the pitch might be able to well, help us out. Anyway, Inter in possession here at the right-back position. Liveramento to Vanderson. Ball played forward. Vassilo misses his header. And now Ivan's through. Ruiz, we need a big stop. We're not going to get the big stop. I mean, Vassilo, I've just, I've just talked about the fact I trust him. I want to keep him on the pitch. He, yes, he's on a yellow card, but he's on a 7.2. And then he does that. And then he does that. I mean, the other thing is, of course, the centre-back I normally bring on in this situation would be McIntosh. He's already on the pitch because of the Sanchez stuff. I mean, they've had three shots on target and they've all gone in. It has been one of those days. Ruiz is not the best of games. I feel like he's been kind of not really bailed out by his defenders in terms of the types of chances he's been asked to deal with. But look, there's still time left in this game. We've already scored a couple. As long as Inter don't get a fourth, I'll remain calm. They might be about to get a fourth. Kronberger on this far side squares it. Liveramento's lurking and Ivan scores his 23rd goal of the season. And I don't really know what to say. They've had, what, four shots? Six shots now. No, five shots. They've had five shots. They've all gone in. Well, four of them have. Um, what do you say about that? The ball was crossed in. Ivan hits it. I mean, it's a good finish. Oh, we have... I want to say we've not been good enough here, but I actually don't feel like we've played that badly. Right, Heinz Winter on for Gurajaga. That's the change I'm going with. Imagine if Gurajaga had scored that one-on-one -on -one to start the second half. How different would this game have been? I don't want to go overly attacking here. I don't want to overcommit men forward. I feel like at 4-2, it's salvageable. Could be about to get worse, though. The ball's whipped in. Bastoni hits the crossbar. Mercifully for us, it's gone over. But for the se second time in this Champions League knockout stage, we've got to go to Selhurst Park and do something quite remarkable. Inter Milan, very, very clinical. I just need to tell the players they weren't good enough. I mean, I'm almost shell-shocked. Those goals just came out of absolutely nowhere. With it, they take a lead of 4-2. Of course, we've got six days to rest, recoup, and re well, re regroup as well as recoup. I suppose we need to we need to get our heads in the game. I don't know what's just happened. I almost feel shell shocked. Uh, Vassilo was not good enough in the end. Man of the match went to Ivan. If we just have a look at him, um, yeah, he's he's quite a good striker. Is that Ivan bloke? How much did they pay for him? Fifty eight million. That's a bit of a bargain, isn't it? He's you can see why Inter are doing quite good. I mean, look, we've got to be positive. Let's try and be positive. We beat them 6-0 in the group stage. We just have to do that again. How hard can it be? Can I be real with you for a second? This isn't the situation I thought we were going to be coming back for in this second leg. I thought we were at least going to get a draw against Inter. I guess the group stage games kind of lured me into a false sense of security. But we've 
They had big wins before at home in your hope. We did it just last round. We won 3-0 against Bayern Munich. We just have to do that again. But there's maybe a little bit more pressure on us this time to actually perform. Um, obviously, with this scenario, there's an easy temptation to overthink things, to change things too much. I am making a couple of changes going into this game. One man who it might shock you to see me drop is Carlier. Um, he's had a few games where he's had a really big impact on off the bench. And to be honest, as a starter... As of late, he's really not been cutting the mustard, so he's going to get dropped out of the team for middle B. I'm going to stick with George still at centre mid on attack. Um, elsewhere, there was a temptation to take out Vassalo, but I am going to keep him in, I think, today and hope that he can really step up his performance. Elsewhere, Sanchez is unsuspended, so it does mean that we get our best kind of normal defence, I suppose, into the team. I'm hoping that we're going to rekindle some of the form that preceded that previous game against Inter. It's kind of mad, isn't it, to look at and see, what is this, six clean sheets or seven clean sheets in eight games and then suddenly we concede four? Yeah, we, uh, we've got to change that today. So anyway, this is our team. We're going to get it submitted straight away and we're going to hope that we can save our season. Whilst it wouldn't be the end of our season if we get knocked out here, the pressure to do well in the Premier League it really steps up a notch all of a sudden. And of course, with us still being in the semi-final of the FA Cup, albeit against Liverpool, suddenly I have to take both those competitions very, very seriously. And it's only the quarter-final of the Champions League. I'm not ready to see our European adventure end here. And when you look at their team, it's an experienced team. It's got a surprisingly large amount of real players. I'm going to hope that that experience isn't going to or benefit them here as we, with our younger side, look to upset the odds, look to come back from behind at Selhurst Park. And well, very early on, we're going to have a free kick in a dangerous area. Zambergen, I assume, is the man over it. This man has 17 or 18 free kick taking. And for a second, I thought it was going to go in. The keeper made a stop. It was loose for a moment. They actually did very well there into to deal with it. So Book apparently has picked up a knock. Don't really want to take him off. Unfortunately for us, David Lind, I couldn't fit into my Champions League squad. Um, that is one thing worth mentioning. In the Champions League, we only have a squad of 22 or 21 players because I don't have enough homegrown at club players. So in terms of the rotation I can do, in terms of how much we can actually change things up, the options were limited. And, uh, well, they're on the attack early. If Inter score first, we are in trouble. And I thought we were going to be in trouble for a second. Siric there, not sure about that header away. He's got it away from danger. Let's not criti criticise the method to his madness. It's like a diving header, John Terry style. Either way, nil-nil. I feel like an early goal would have eased my nerves somewhat, but it's not emerged yet, and we could still be waiting a little while. Ricalde tries to play it forward for them. Read well by our defence now. George, moving forward, gives away the ball, unfortunately for us, and now with Vanderson, who's going to play it through to Ricalde, who springs the offside trap and puts it just wide of the post. You know what? I've not done this all year. I'm getting rid of the offside trap. They broke on us a couple of times last game. They've nearly done it there. That was a warning shot in our direction. I mean, we're having chances, but we're not having nearly enough of the ball in this game. I'm going to ask the players to shorten the passing a little bit. Still working the ball into the box. Let's get rid of be more expressive. Let's, let's push higher. Let, let's, let's try and hold a higher defensive line and really try and catch them out. Right, corner here. De Silva over it. A set-piece goal would set us on our way. And unfortunately for us, Tullio is going to head it just over. Ball played forward towards Ivan. Read by our defence. Well, now with Ruiz. How are we for possession here? I want to see that possession stat swing back in our favour. Inter haven't created a lot. But when they have created stuff, they scored it, as we saw last game. Really, we need to focus on our own numbers. We need to focus on scoring our own goals. We need at least two here to take his extra time. We've got a chance here. And Guru Jagger misses another one-on-one. -on -one. He puts it just the wrong side of the post. Zamberg, and now with a free kick from deep, he hits it. The keeper parries it for a corner. I feel like if I was going to look at two positions where we've been lacking in this semi... Well, not even semi-final, in this quarter-final so far... I'd look at the goalkeeper and question if Ruiz could have done better in the first leg. And also the chances that Gurajaga has squandered for us. We've had some really good chances. I mean, as things stand, they've had two shots all game. The possession stat did start to swing back towards us. Going to tell the players they're letting themselves down. We've got to go more attacking here, I feel like. I'm going to go to more attacking. I'm going to keep the shorter passing, but keep up the tempo slightly. We're already pressing more and more here. Distribute quickly. Let's get it to the fullbacks if we can. 
I'm looking at their team and they're not playing well, but we're just not finding a breakthrough yet. But we could have a chance here. Ball whipped in. It nearly went all the way in from De Silva's cross. In the end, it falls to Zambergen. He makes it for free. We needed an early goal in this half to really, you know, instill some fight, I suppose, back into us. I don't know if you can tell from my point of view. I feel demoralised. This goal, it gives us a chance. It's only 4-3. There's no away goals. Kind of wish there was right now. We've been dominant in this game, but we need more. And you know what? This game, with Middleby not playing at well, is calling out for Carlier. I'm going to bring him into the team. Elsewhere, I'm going to bring in Heinz Winter as well. Up top for Gurajaga. A more out-and-out -out finisher coming on as we look to chase this game. Time is just whittling away, though. We've got to be a little bit concerned here. There's 15 minutes left. We need a breakthrough. I'm going to throw another man forward. We're going to move De Silva into the striking position, play Carlier as a shadow striker in behind. we got to go for this. That passing out from the back that we were doing, it's lovely in principle, but we need to get it forward quicker. We need to be a little bit more direct in our play. We need a goal in what remains here. There's 10 minutes left. There is now a highlight, which I guess we have to view as a positive. But of course, as we go forward, we're going to leave ourselves exposed at the back. Into Milan, giving away the ball. Now we look to break. Winter holds it up nicely for Vassilo. Talha. George with it. Tries to pick out De Silva with a very ambitious ball that goes wayward. But we do turn over possession and it's now with Zambergen who's bringing it forward and he's going to do it all on his lonesome. Heinz Winter's given the assist. He shouldn't get an assist for that. It's 2-0 on the night. It's 4-4 in aggregate. And you know what, Zambergen? I've said a lot of mean stuff about you. I've said a lot of nasty things about you over this year. But in the last two episodes, you've come big in the big moments. The question now is, do I stay on this attacking philosophy or do I maybe calm down slightly? I'll tell you what, let's go back to positive. Um, in terms of team instructions, I mean, the midfield shape isn't that different. We've just ditched one of the shadow strikers for an extra attacker and put Zambergen on attack. I'll tell you what, I'm going to move Zambergen deeper, but keep him on attack. I want to try and make these runs from deep. I know there's some people sat there thinking, Jack, just play for extra time now. No, I want to want to keep on the front foot if we can. Four minutes of added time here. Ball is thrown into Winter. Chirich to George. Out in this wide area. What can he do? He pulls it back to Chirich. It's whipped towards the back post. Carlier nods it down. Sanchez hits it over. It's a glorious opportunity for the right back. And it's going to be the last chance inside the 90 minutes ladies and gentlemen we are going to extra time you're getting an even longer episode to end your friday not the kind of longer episode i want but the cut longer episode that you deserve well from kickoff there's a highlight to silver winter zambergen he's on for the hat trick could he get it it's safe but it falls to the silver and 18 seconds into extra time a comeback that looked very very unlikely it's complete, folks. De Silva moving up into that striking position has caused them all kinds of issues. They've just not been able to contain him. Winter involved again in the build-up. Zamberg, and I thought the chance had gone, but a Zemmer for them in goal could only parry it straight to the Peruvian prince himself. Captain Fantastic scores. I'm looking at things now. Vasilo's having a bad game. He's tired. I'm bringing in... Um, Macintosh. We have got one more change in our back pocket. Chabuk hasn't had the best of games. I'm going to bring in Payrat here and play him as a DM on defend. And then also just going to change our wing backs to slightly more defensive variants. And we're going to look to manage the games like we have a few times this season. We don't need to counter press quite as intensely. I feel like an extra time, you know, we've got some tired legs out there. Let's just lower the game to our own tempo if we get another goal fantastic but we can see this out we have not looked like conceding in this game they've had one shot on target all game and with that in mind i don't want to change things too radically but i do feel like you know tired legs risk us getting caught out into playing in possession for the first time really all game it feels like they're trying to make something happen raul morrow won't get there tullio on a booking gets there instead we have got a few bookings at the back we've got to be wary of one more goal and you'd say it's done. Oh my word. Ball played forward to Carlier. Zambergen. Unbelievable today. Carlier on off the bench. The decision not to start him in this game. More than justified. And nine minutes into this extra time. 
a game that looked close. I mean, it was close. Let's be honest. It was 4-4 on aggregate. It's now 6-4 on aggregate, and it just feels like it's been one-way traffic. Really, all leg. But especially since we got that second goal, we've kind of, I don't know, we've chilled out a little bit. We've enjoyed ourselves. Zambergen on a 10.0. Should we just, let's just have a look at him. Just remember how good this man is. Oh my word, he has been unbelievable lately. You can see here, I dropped him for a little while. He was so hit and miss, and then, well, he's turned up in a few big games. He's turned up again here. We've been deservedly on top in this game. I felt like we were a tad unlucky to lose 4-2 in the first leg, but this kind of comeback has to give us belief that maybe we could... You know, do the whole thing. Zamberg, oh my word, if he'd scored that, I don't know what I'd do. At that point, maybe I'd take my shirt. No, maybe that's probably too far, isn't it? It would have been mad if he had scored another then. Carlier, back to George. I've been told it's George, not George. Apparently, George would be if he was Brazilian. It'd be George if he's Portuguese, which is what he is. It's very confusing, the Portuguese language, is what I've learned. Brazilian, Portuguese, and Portuguese. I mean, look, I'm just, I don't know either, so send help. Anyway, Chirich, Payrat. George. George is easier to say, isn't it? Payrat. Look at this. This is nice. We could just do this for the next nine minutes. I mean, it's very, very nice. Is there end product? Oh, my word. De Silva was offside there. I was about to say, if he was onside, it would have been an amazing goal to score, but he did always look a little bit off. Oh, the one-way traffic just continues here. McIntosh headers it against the crossbar. We've had chances in this game. We probably should be a little bit more annoyed that we've not managed to score more. Maybe one last chance here from the corner. It's crossed in. Tullio heads over, but it doesn't matter. That's going to be game set and match. It's taken 30 minutes longer than I thought it would. But we have made it through here. And I feel like the tactical changes we made worked a tree. I mean, look at those stats. We dominated the game on the whole. Maybe need to look into the possibility of playing something like this more in games that we're chasing. Going to have to watch back my own video and re-implement the same tactical changes. Either way, a massive result for us. Elsewhere, Real Madrid won 2-0 in their game. If I'm not mistaken, the Champions League semi-final draw has already been made. I believe we were playing the winner of Chelsea and Arsenal, but I don't know which of them did it in terms of made it through. Should we have a look? I mean, has it even been decided yet? It might not have even been decided yet. It hasn't. Oh, you know what? We've got to, we've got to keep going forward here. Zandbergen takes the plaudits. The man got a 10.0 in that game. That is absolutely ridiculous. We get £9 million as well for just playing in the Champions League quarterfinals. Mental the money involved there. That is crazy, crazy stuff for us. When is the next leg of the Champions League? Oh, it is on the horizon. I'm wondering if next episode we do the FA Cup semi-final and the first leg, and then the day after we do the Everton game and then the second leg of the Champions League. There is a chance that that Everton game could be the match where we guarantee ourselves the Premier League title. So I feel like splitting these games up and having the FA Cup semi-final as well sounds pretty good. We have set a record in the Champions League for number of goals. The previous record was 34. We have 37 as of the semi-final. Have we really scored that many in the Champions League? That seems bonkers to me that no one has ever scored more. Because that includes qualifying rounds. But I guess when you look at it, yeah, we did have some 6-0, some 7-0s. The 4 0, the 3 0. Basically, don't play us at home is what I'm learning looking at this. We've not lost a game at home. In fact, every game at home in the Champions League so far, we've ended up winning by at least a three goal margin. Granted, that intergame was two goals in extra time. So, to round off what has been an absolutely crazy episode today, I can confirm that the other teams in the semi final of the Champions League are going to be Arsenal and Borussia Dortmund. And I know what we're all thinking. We're taking on Arsenal in the semi-final and we're going to be going head-to-head -head against Fontana, who apparently needs a rest and uh, I still really, really, really would like to sign. Who knows? Maybe if we beat Arsenal in the next episode, we can convince him that he should join us instead of staying with them. Either way, it's going to be a massive couple of episodes coming up ahead of this end of season. We have the FA Cup semi-final next time, as well as the first leg of the Champions League knockouts. Then we shift focus to the second leg of that Champions League semi-final. The Premier League is still looking like it could go down to the wire. Looking at things here, Manchester United and Liverpool have played their games in hand. Did Manchester United drop up and I didn't uh, slip up and I didn't notice? Wow. Okay, they lost in the first leg of the Europa League. They actually lost to Everton at the weekend 3-1. I didn't even notice that. Worth noting, Manchester United also in the FA Cup semi-final. So as we're doing battle against Liverpool, 
they're doing battle against West Ham. It really has been Liverpool and Manchester United being a pain in the ass this season. Hopefully, next episode, we can win in the semi-finals of our respective games and look good in the league. I just have a feeling that's not... It's never been straightforward this year as we endured today. Thank you for watching as always. If you have enjoyed today's video, do slap a like on it. I know I say that every episode. It really does make a difference with how the YouTube algorithm works. I don't understand it, but when people like or even dislike the video, more people seem to see it. I mean, go, I mean if you want to leave a, di do leave a dislike if you want. It all helps. It's all gravy, baby. Right, I'm turning into Austin Powers. That's a good sign that we need to end today's episode. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on Monday for more. Where am I going with this? Yeah, let's, let's end things on that. It's all gravy, baby. That might be a new low for me.